Hey everyone, welcome back. I know it's been quite a while since we posted our last video, but I am back and ready to deliver more awesome content. So the topic of today, the inspiration actually came to me by watching cooking videos. Maybe you think I watch a bunch of math videos on YouTube and you would be correct, but when I'm not doing that, I watch a lot of cooking, baking videos. And something you hear really often when you watch a cooking video is that this recipe is quick but delicious. Now, think about that phrase for a second. Why is that so appealing to us? Well, if you think about it, it's because they're kind of contradictory. We assume that if a recipe is quick, then we probably sacrifice something in terms of deliciousness. On the other hand, if it's really delicious, then it must take a really long time to make, right? So if a chef comes and says, this recipe is not only quick to make, won't take you too much time, but also it's gonna be delicious, you're going to love it. It seems like a cheat code. We're optimizing for two things at once. And that is the spirit of this video. Mathematically and in terms of data science, we'll be talking about a concept in this video called multi-objective optimization. But in a nutshell and said much more simply, it's just trying to effectively do multiple things at once. So to go into the data science territory for a second, most of the time on this channel and most of the literature out there, most of the basic data science problems people are solving are always geared towards solving one kind of objective. So I want to maximize the accuracy or precision or recall of my model. I want to maximize the sales of my business. I want to minimize the churn of my customers. Typically we think of one objective and I want to build a model that's going to best fit either maximize or minimize, in general, optimize that objective. But hold on, that's not the way the real world works. In any problem, even basic ones, you usually want to do at least two things well simultaneously. So we use this example a bunch on the channel, but pretend you've started a streaming service called Statflix, where you're putting movies and TV shows about statistics. And let's say that you are deciding the order in which to show results to users after they type in some keywords. So let's say the user comes in and types superhero movie. So let's say you have superhero movies from two major companies. You have them from Starvel Comics and you have them from Distribution Comics. Now, let's say that the user probably cares about the Starvel Comics ones. So if you're just optimizing for user happiness, you would show those to the user first. But let's say that the Distribution Comics folks are paying you more as a business to show their stuff on top. So now you have to strike a balance because you as a business person care about both of these things. You want to keep your users happy and show them things they actually would want to get surfaced. But at the same time, you do need to care about money as a business. And so it does make sense sometimes to promote things that are paying you more, even if they may be slightly less relevant to the user. So this is just one kind of business use case, but step away from all the business for a second and just think about your daily life. Every person has 24 hours in a day and you need to decide what are the objectives that I'm going to accomplish that day. So there's no person out there that's just going through their entire day trying to optimize for a singular objective. For example, if we think of two objectives, either the amount of hours you work and the amount of hours that you exercise. Now, I think most people would say there's a good balance to be struck between these two things. If you lean into either one 100%, then that's not gonna improve your quality of life too much. And there's tons of other ways people spend their time, obviously, too. I'm, time I spend watching movies, time I spend with my kids, times I spend with my partner, all of these different things. So we as human beings are fundamentally, and without even thinking about it, multi-objective optimizers. We are already trying to do multiple things at once. And we know that by splitting our time in this way, we're not going to be the best at any one of these things. But we're willing to take that sacrifice because it means we're doing okay, pretty good, acceptably on everything holistically. And that is the spirit of this video. Now for this video, we're gonna keep things light and fun. We're not gonna be going into any math. Instead, we're gonna be playing a simple game of cat, mouse, and cheese. So on your screen here, you have three little dots. So over on the bottom left, you have the mouse. Pretend that's you for this video. Over on the top right, you have some cheese that you as the mouse would love to eat. But beware, on the top left here, you have the cat. And if the cat catches you before you get the cheese, then you're dead. Now, as the mouse, you have two loss functions in mind. Loss function and objective function we're using interchangeably here. They're basically just functions that tell you how close or far you are from meeting certain objectives. 
you have a loss function for the cheese, which we'll call L sub cheese. And this loss function is going to be lower if you're close to the cheese. Fundamentally, it makes sense, right? If you're really close to the cheese, then your loss is low for the cheese. On the other hand, if you're really far from the cheese, your loss is very high. You also have a loss function that pertains to the cat, L sub cat, and this behaves basically in the opposite way. The closer you are to the cat, that's really bad, and so your loss function there is going to be really high. The further you get from the cat, that's good, you're getting safer, so your loss function is going to be lower. Now let's go ahead and run this simulation and see what happens if we tell the mouse to just focus on the cheese. So this is not a multi-objective optimization problem, this is more of those traditional optimization problems that we solve, where we're saying that, hey, go get the cheese, that's your only objective. Let's see how that plays out. So we see that didn't play out super well, and it's pretty easy to see why. The mouse basically just made a straight beeline for the cheese, and the cat was like, okay, I'm just gonna go catch you. The mouse made no attempt whatsoever, it was not part of its objective to avoid the cat, and therefore unsurprisingly got eaten by the cat before it was able to get to the cheese. Now let's see what interesting things start happening when we tell the mouse to focus a little bit on the cat. So what we'll do for this next one is that the mouse is going to put a 25% weight for the loss function of the cat, and the other 75% will stay in the loss function of the cheese. Let's see how that plays out side by side with the old one. We see the outcome is the same here. The mouse still gets caught, but you can see now that slight curvature in the path it's taking to try at least, try, and get away from the cat. So maybe it hasn't succeeded fully, and maybe that's because we need to boost these relative weights, so we need to tell the mouse to focus a little bit more on the cat if it has any chance of staying away from it by the time it gets to the cheese. So let's go 50-50, 50% of the mouse's attention, or 50% is the loss function on the cat, and 50% on the cheese. Let's see how that plays out relative to the other one. So now amazingly, almost magically, but not magically because we know exactly why this is going on, the mouse is able to do this avoiding tactic, skirt around the cat and get to the cheese before the cat is able to get to it. And this is the power. I think this is the point in the video where we really start seeing that multi-objective optimization can be a way for you to do multiple things at once. So maybe the mouse hasn't put 100% of its attention to running away from the cat. Maybe it hasn't put 100% of its attention to getting the cheese. But by splitting its attention in this way, it's actually able to achieve a more desirable outcome than doing either of these things independently. And to see that, we can start pushing this even higher. Let's say that we tell the mouse to focus 75% on the cat and 25% only on the cheese. Let's see how that plays out relative to the 50-50 case. So we see that's not too good. The mouse basically is too worried about the cat, basically just runs off the screen, the cat is chasing it, and the cat will never catch it, but at the same time it's never got the cheese, and so it probably will starve for that reason. So we see that there is a sweet spot to be had here. So I was going to stop the video right there, but I kind of had another thought, and I'm definitely not the first person to have this thought, because it's kind of a very fundamental thing to think about. This is the idea of dynamic prioritization. So what that means is thinking about the cat mouse cheese example, pretend you're the mouse and pretend you're really close to the cheese. It, you can see it, it's right there. And the cat, let's say, is miles away from you. Now I ask you, which one do you want to focus more on? I think most people would say I'm going to focus more on the cheese because it doesn't serve me well to worry about a cat that's nowhere close to getting me. I'm going to focus the bulk of my attention in getting the reward that's basically right there waiting for me. On the other hand, if the cat is just feet away from me, but the cheese is still somewhere in the distance, then I think most people would say the case is the opposite. Now I need to focus pretty much 100% of my efforts in not dying right now. Let me get away from this cat, and then maybe I can go focus on the cheese a little bit more. 
So before we were looking at cases where the relative attention you put on the cat or cheese is fixed, whether that was 50-50 or 25-75 or 75-25. But with this dynamic prioritization, and by the way, if you've studied any economics, this is very related to the concept of marginal returns. Basically, the more you've worked on something, the less gain you're going to get by continuing to work on that thing anymore. It's very related to that. So this says that basically the weights that I'm putting on all my different objective functions should be dynamic, should change based on how close I am to meeting certain objectives. This is also how people function in the real world, which is why it's not that crazy of a concept. Going back to that, I can either spend time, let's say, uh, working on my career, or I can spend time working on my physical fitness. If you've already almost maximized either one, if you're at a very high point in your career and there's not a reasonable next place to go that's easy, then maybe spend time on your fitness if you've been ignoring that. On the other hand, if you're working out like five hours a day, but maybe that's at the expense of work on your career, then maybe it's the other way. Of course, everyone has their own formula for success here, but the general idea remains the same. The more you've already accomplished a certain goal, the more it makes sense to maybe focus your mental attention on other goals that maybe need some love and care. So to close the video out, let's see what happens if we incorporate this dynamic prioritization idea into this simulation. So it's possible that I need to tweak the parameters there a little bit. It seems like the mouse is getting right next to the cheese, but then the cat catches up and then it darts away. But it does create a very interesting chase pattern. I think you have to admit that. So hopefully this teaches the idea behind multi-objective optimization. I think the one other key takeaway that I would leave you with, maybe two key takeaways. The first one is that even though we're optimizing multiple objectives, we need to combine them in some way. So you can do a linear combination as we did in this video. You can do more fancy formulas. But typically in data science, people will combine these in some way so that your loss function at the end of the day is still a single number. It's just that that single number results from combining all these different loss functions or objectives in different ways. The other key takeaway is that this is definitely not a silver bullet. So the solution to this multi-objective loss function is going to be at the expense of optimizing either one, going back to the inspiration for this video making a recipe quick and delicious. I can make a recipe really quick by paying no attention to developing flavors, just using canned ingredients. It's gonna be quick, but it's definitely gonna be really far from delicious. On the other hand, I can make a recipe delicious by spending all day developing really complex restaurant level flavors, but at that point, it's no longer gonna be quick. So I can achieve either of these things if I want, but multi-objective optimization says that I'm going to, at the expense of optimizing either of them, I'm going to jointly try and get acceptable or good values for both of them. So it's important to note that you're not doing some magical trick to optimize both of these things perfectly at once. It's just that you are making a compromise or a trade-off that's acceptable in the long run. So hopefully this teaches you in a non-mathematical, non-scary way about multi-objective optimization. If you want to learn more, please let me know. Any comments are always, always, always welcome in the comment section below. I am back. I am ready to deliver more awesome content to you all, and I will see you next time.